<laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> I remember being 16, sitting at cafes and laughing with my friends endlessly. Being 19 and sneaking out for midnight rides, not caring about my assignments. Being 21 and walking cobbled street stones hand in hand in love. Now I'm 26. I often sneak out to Netflix land. <laughs> I have endless conversations with my coffee mugs and my phone. This got me thinking something really interesting. So if I look back into my 10 years, in most of my memories, there was a person and a place. <laughs> but in the next 10 years, when I look back to these years, are you saying that I'm almost always, can, always going to think about binging Netflix <laughs> or tapping my screen away? Funny, huh? I understand that we are surrounded by screens. They're in our pocket. They're in our bags right now. Some of us in the audience are definitely using them. But that's OK. Technology helps me connect to people I love so easily. It helps me make tasks efficient so that I can take out time for more important things. But guess what? That time I take out is mostly, almost always on screens. And here I stand and ask myself as a designer, uh, this is redundant. But I'm a designer, right? So I want to come up with nice solutions. And I ask myself this question. Shreya, can I make radic can I make tactical experiences for people through technology? Two years ago, I got the chance to do this. I did an internship for Amsterdam Media Lab, and me and my intern friends were asked to tweak around with these screens. And what happened was, we decided to create these meaningful encounters in the cafe over there. And uh, in my memories, as I had told you, the two important things and important factors of a meaningful conversation was a person and a place. What we decided that that person would be the screen Let's call him Rick. So Rick had to be as human as us, had to understand us to be able to create these experiences. So Rick would take places from Amsterdam, which was common to everybody in the cafe, and put it up on the screens. These places could be the park, the zoo, the market spaces, where each and every one of them would have gone to with their loved ones, reminding them. But what Rick would also do was create conversations. So he would trigger these hooks, like you see up here, and try to trigger an emotion in them. On a sunny day, he would use a hook like this. On a rainy day, he would ask you, when was the last time you told someone you loved them? On a very dull day, he would ask you, did you know that 75% of the humanity has tried to lick their elbow? So for five minutes, we waited, and we saw that, nervously th thought that this is not going to work. People are not going to start talking. I mean, these are screens we're talking about. But they did. There was like a bustle in the cafe. Everybody started talking to each other. They started making conversation. They were laughing. They were so happy. And all in all, it was a great day. I felt as a designer, I am super successful. I created these tactile experiences, and voila. But when I went back to these pictures, I saw something like this. And I was like, hmm. I mean, Rick was great. He did distract all those users and have made them have conversations with each other. But the real problem was still there. Our phones and our devices were still getting us hooked, right? So for a year, I thought I should be the user and I should experience these products. Social media, 
well, that's quite a party out there. It was amazing, the experiences that were offered. The instant gratification was like endorphin. You would be just addicted, and you would constantly want to see what more is happening. Everything is just in the tap of a finger. But then also, the designer side of me would be designing these experiences. I kept asking myself, OK, OK, I'm hooked, I'm hooked. But this isn't technology. It doesn't feel like technology. Technology is not the culprit that's getting me hooked. It's something else. Until a client came up to me and said, Shreya, this interface that you design looks great. But can we have an experience that will get the user back to the app again and again? I looked at him and I was like, it's a bill paying app. What are you saying? At that moment, I was a designer, but a user as well. And as a user, I felt I was an experiment. I felt that these entrepreneurs and business people are earning profits out of experimenting on me. And it just did not, it created a negative feeling inside me. One such negative feeling I can tell you. Often my friends go off to vacations and completely dump their phones and their personal devices away, which is a negative feedback towards technology. If we continue to design technology, if we continue to design such experiences for users, they will deject technology. So I stand here and I tell, tell you guys this, that Let's start steering innovation and change in such a way which gives us instant gratification, but also gives us sustained gratification, something that we can remember after 10 years, so that we don't just have screens to remember after 10 years. I want you to leave with these three questions today. One, what is the last meaningful memory that you remember? Second, when was the last time you saw your phone? Third, do you remember what you saw on the phone? Thank you so much. <laughs>